What's going on guys, this is Shady of Lightning back with Digimon Adventure Tri Symbiosis episode 18 review. I know I haven't been uploading lately guys, but I will try my best to do so from now on. And oh, by the way guys, I am reviewing each episode as I go along. So please, no spoilers for the next episode in the comments. Anyways, on with the review. This episode was very Mako-centric. It starts off with Mako getting strangled to death by Evil Genai, which is ironic because Evil Genai is also the same voice as Sanji, and Sanji would never hit a woman. But it leads to an interesting little flashback. We see Mako's dad and his team take Mako Man into a laboratory for research. But the thing is, they don't actually show what research they were doing. They just jump straight into the scene where Mako Man loses control. Oh, and guess who else we see in that research lab? Of course, it's Maki. But again, I just want to emphasize the fact that we don't see what type of research they were doing to Mako Man. Or is the word research just a cover-up word for experimenting? Maki has been investigating Mako Man, which means she also knows stuff about Mako Man that only she would know. And I'm guessing that also correlates to the research that they were doing to Mako Man in this laboratory. The flashback ends with Mako Man just about to destroy everyone in the laboratory, including Mako's dad, until Mako showed up. And with Mako's appearance, Mako Man started to calm down and go back to her usual happy self, which is in contrast to what happens now in present time. Rather than calming down, Mako Man just flips and tries to kill Mako. Mako only dodged the attack because of Tai. Speaking of Tai, I know I ranted and bashed on Tai's character a lot in this series, but you have to understand, he is my favorite character. So if he's acting the way differently in which, to me, it doesn't make any sense from a story standpoint, then I'm going to take it personally. Because he's my favorite character, of course. But in this episode, Tai was back to his usual self. He really took care of Mako, risking his own life, which reminded us all why he got the Crest of Courage in the first place. And not only that, towards the end of the episode when Mako is feeling sorry for herself and is blaming herself for Mako-mon's insanity, Tai was the true one that was consoling her the most. Yes, I know they were all doing it, but Tai it felt like he took it a step further to the point where Tai could be having romantic feelings for Mako and vice versa, of course. And we saw a scene where she was blushing herself. So, you know, there's a little romantic interest between the two. I don't know, maybe Tai realized he has no chance with Sora. That's why he's going after Mako. I mean, for me personally, I don't really care much for the shipping in this fandom. But if I were to decide a match for Tai, it would be him and Mimi. But again, that's just me. Don't argue, you know, don't kill me for that. Anyways, during this scene, we also see the distortions of space portals opening up and taking many infected Digimon to the real world. Do you guys remember in the first season when the Digitest and first defeated Venom Myodisman and a portal opened up in the sky where you can see the digital world? This reminds me of that. In the midst of all the satellites malfunctioning, we see Maki turning into Oikawa, which is interesting because all Oikawa wanted to do was go to the digital world and have his own Digimon, and it seems as though Maki wants the same as well. Heck, she's even gone that crazy look that only Oikawa had. I don't know, could she potentially die at the end of the series? I mean, if she's turning into Oikawa, we all know how the story of Oikawa ended and it's not a good story. It's very, very tragic, in fact. Maki could possibly also, you know, have that same fate. During the chaos of all the infected Digimon invading Earth, we see Heckman talking to Nishijima and Maki's dad. And this, I feel, is the most important scene in this episode. Heckman reveals that Makoman has parts of Apoklemon's data inside of her, which he also explains that this data also contains the dark side of the digital world. Hmm. Could that mean that it's the dark ocean? Because that's what the dark ocean essentially is. It's a dark, tormented version of the digital world. And in order for Makoman to keep her positive and negative energy in balance, she needs a Digidestin partner, which is Mako. And as we saw in the past, it worked. Mako was always there to keep and store the negative energy away from Makoman, but now that's not working. As we saw earlier on in the episode, Makoman was about to kill Mako. And as Heckman said, the more the negative energy is suppressed, when it's cut loose, then there's no holding back. The power is so destructive that it can destroy all harmony. Similarly to Apoklimon, when he had the power to just delete all good and light. When Digimon die in the digital world, they get reborn. But when Apoklimon died, he died in another dimension, which looks very similar to the dimension that Makomon was sleeping in in this episode. I'll go further in detail to that in another video, but it could be that Apoklimon is reborn and is now Makomon. That would be a twist. Let me know in the comments down below on what you think, you know, Apoklimon's data and Makomon's, you know, fusion little data going on. What do you guys think on that? 
We then see scenes of the Digidestant running, but then the land underneath them disappears. Kari says the digital world thinks of the Digidestant as a nuisance. That's why the solid land is always disappearing every time the Digidestants are running. But I don't believe that. Remember back in season 1 where Puppet Man was controlling the land and the trees with his remote control. I believe that someone is doing the same thing in this scenario and I believe that person is Evo Genite. Because there's no way the digital world thinks that the Digidestants are the problem. The Digidestants have almost been a legacy in the digital world. There's even a giant Digivice carved inside a pyramid in the File Island. So the Digidestants are the children of prophecy. So there's no way that the digital world will be turning on the children of prophecy. Even if the digital world is rebooted, there will always be chosen children. So I don't believe for a second that the digital world will be turning on the Digidestants. Overall, this was a solid start to the movie, although I wanted to still get a hint on what happened to the O2 Digidestin, but overall, good episode so far. I just hope Mako stops feeling sorry for herself and toughens up a bit. Let me know what you guys think of the episode and please don't kill me on the shipping comments. You know, we're all cool, everyone has their own opinion and of course, care for nothing.